Welcome back to Truly Electric. It's been a very long time since I made a video on this channel. Today is a little bit different. We're not gonna be doing a video on the rad power bikes here. Uh, hopefully I can shoot some videos on this soon, but as you can see, our garage is a mess. We just moved, uh, we moved to a different state. Um, a lot has happened, but I do have a flat tire here. So I do need to get this change and start riding again. But yes, as you all have noticed, I have changed the channel from Rad City e-bike vlog or something like that to just truly electric because my plan is to branch off from just the Rad City, although still continuing to do those type of videos, but also um, do some videos on, you know, like our Tesla car. I got some electric like blowers, weed eater. I got this electric lawnmower. Oh yeah, and the power walls. Uh, so today I wanted to do something a little bit different. In the Tesla app, I updated the car, updated the app, and now I have this new charge on solar feature. So if we go to our solar tab here, so as you can see here, we're generating 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours of solar, and our home is using 0.4. So let's plug the car in, see how that changes, and then we can talk about the charge on solar. And you can see now, including the house usage plus now the car, we're now at 5.9 kilowatts being used by our home, which is mostly actually the car. But what charge on solar should do is rather than charging at a consistent 20 amps, the car should adjust its amperage based on the amount of sun there is. So let's activate it and see what it does. So we're gonna click on charge on solar. And here it says drive on sunshine, plug in your vehicle at home during the day to charge using the excess clean energy generated by your solar system. So it's only gonna charge based off of the excess solar that you have. So let's actually go back first. I think a better way to, to demonstrate this would be to up the amperage here. So let's up the amperage to, let's kick it up to 40 amps. Okay, so at 40 amps, the app says we're drawing nine kilowatts. If we go to the solar now, you can see that including our house, we are now at 12 kilowatts. So I. Again, I think the AC's kicked on, which is why it's much higher. But the whole point I wanna demonstrate here is that we are using more than what the solar is providing. My solar system, based on this inverter, maxes out at around 7.6, 7.7 kilowatts, meaning that if I'm using more than what my solar is generating, it's gonna have to pull from the battery. So you can see the power wall is taking 4.9 kilowatts. And then we got a little bit extra being pulled from the grid. So let's say that you wanted to manage your batteries and you wanted to stay at 100%. Based on the current setup, you would have to come in here and manually adjust your amperage. But with charge on solar, it should only use the excess solar that's being generated. And you don't need to manually go in and change your amperage. It's gonna automatically adjust so that you're only charging your vehicle from the sun, not from the grid, not from the battery. So let's start that, charge on solar. We read this already, let's continue. It's asking for my location and we need Bluetooth access. Next, we're gonna have to set up the device as a key. So we're gonna pair, swipe key card now, swipe my key and now on the screen, it's asking to confirm pairing. So the next prompt is asking me if I wanna allow the Tesla app to use location when I'm not using the app. I'm gonna say no, just only while using. Okay, and now we are at a set charge limits screen. So now there's gonna be two sliders. One slider used to charge as normal for daily driving. And then after you reach that level, you would use this slider here to set your limit for the amount to charge just by the sun. So let's continue and let's set that up. So, but not quite yet because it's asking to pair the phone to the power wall. So let's do that, begin pairing. And it says to find the toggle switch on the side. Toggle it off 
then back on to securely pair your phone. If you have more than one power wall, only one switch needs to be toggled. So we have two power walls here. I'm gonna to toggle the power wall that's attached to the inverter. Again, I don't think it matters, but let's just do that. And we'll turn it off and back on. Okay, it made some sounds. And that's it. It says power wall is securely paired to your phone. Perfect. Finish. Finally, it's asking you to enter your home address. So I'm gonna do that. And I've entered my home address. So I'm gonna hit complete setup at the bottom. So it looks like we finished the setup process. Now it goes through a couple tutorials on charging on solar. So let's just go through these screens. Drive on sunshine, plug in your vehicle at home during the day to charge using excess clean energy generated by your solar system. Here it's telling you how to use your sliders. So you would set this slider here uh, to charge your car as normal. Once your charge limit passes this slider, it's only going to use excess sun to get to your final charge limit. And this is what I just said. So the second half, just by using the sun. And charging behavior. Due to constant fluctuation of solar generation and home loads, Charging on solar will only occur when there is at least 1.2 kilowatts of excess solar. Okay, so that makes sense. And that's it. Done. So a couple things changed. At the top, now it says charging on solar with a sun icon. If we come down, let me reduce the brightness a little bit so you can see the actual colors. There are two sliders now. So again, the first slider, if your charge level is below this first slider, it's gonna charge at the full 40 amps until it gets to this first slider. Once it hits this first slider, from here to the next slider, it'll charge only on solar. So because I'm, you can see the green here, I'm past that first slider, it's now charging on solar. Let's say that I wanted to charge at the full 40 amps up to up to 56%. So now because my first slider is above my car's current charge of 48%, it's gonna charge at the full 40 amps. You can see it's ramping up here at 33, now 40. We're gonna charge at the full 40 amps until we hit that first slider, which is at 56%. Um, let's see how far down we can go. Okay, so it looks like we can only go down to 40%. And when I just did that, you can see that my car's amperage now changed. Even though I'm at 40 amps, it's only charging at 19. Let's jump to the solar screen. And the solar screen graphic looks to be changed as well. So now, pretty cool, we got our Model 3 sitting in the garage because it's charging on solar. Our solar is generating 6.3. Our home is using 1.2. And the car is pulling 5. So theoretically, even though I'm at 40 amps, which should be charging at 9 plus kilowatts, my car is only charging at 5 because it's only charging off of the excess. So 6.3 minus 1.3. I'm taking that excess from the solar and charging my vehicle. Uh, one thing I'm curious about is if I go below what the excess solar is. So the excess now from my solar is 19 amps. So let's say I limit my charging at 10 amps. All right, so that makes sense. So if you go below the excess solar amount uh, with your amps, it's gonna limit uh, your amperage to what you set here. So 10 amps, if I go back to my solar, even though I have now about four kilowatts of excess solar, my car is being limited at two kilowatts because of 
the limiting factor, which is the amperage that I set. Let's do one more test. All right, so let's turn on one of these. Let's do the large burner on high. You can see the burner is now on. Let's jump to our solar view. Our home now usage is picking up and let's, let's go crazy. Let's add on the other large burner. All right, so we got two on and you can see with just those two large burners on, our home shot up to 8.2 kilowatts. So that's another thing with this app is like I can see how much these appliances use and it's actually very insightful. So here, as you can see now, there's no excess solar. We're generating 6.4, our home is using more. So technically there's no excess solar. Our Model 3 is using one. And I'm gonna turn off the stove now. I turned off the burners, our home dropped back down to 1.2, and now the charging on the Model 3 kicked back up to the difference of five kilowatts. So if any of you were curious on that new Tesla charge on solar feature, hopefully this video explained it from beginning to end, showed you all the details, and yeah, hopefully you guys can try it out for yourselves. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Sorry, I'm back. I put away my microphone, so hopefully the sound is coming out good. But I wanted to look to see how the app looked on a device that wasn't set up as a phone key, which is this device here. We set up charging on solar on this iPad here. You can see we got the two sliders charging on solar. On the phone though, you can see yes, charging on solar, but I don't have the option to control the charging on solar feature and it still has the notification here to set up charge on solar. So it seems like devices to adjust your charge on solar need to be paired to your car. So I'm also curious about the slider in the car. So let's take a quick look at that. Okay, we are in the car. As you can see, the car now has the two sliders as well. So that's great. Again, let's see if we can go below 40 with this first slider. No. So you can go above, but if I slide past, I can't slide this way. The uh, bottom limit is 40. So if your car goes below 40%, you're gonna be charging at your full amperage that you set here until you hit 40%. And then anything beyond 40%, you could set this all the way to 100 if you wanted to. So you could charge all of this from 40 to 100 on just excess solar energy. But for me, on a daily basis, I charge my car to 60. At the top, you can see we got the charging on solar icon as well. And finally, at the bottom of the charging page, we got this new charge on solar at this location feature. So let's toggle that. If we toggle it off, we are still plugged in. What I'm guessing is now our amperage here is gonna kick up to 30, which is what we have set here and it's gonna charge at 30 amps all day till we get to 60. So that makes sense. But at home, at my location, I'm gonna toggle that on. We got the two sliders back, charging on solar, and now the amperage is resetting to just adjust the amps based on the excess solar.